celebs who ruined their careers on live TV. Well, it might be hard to believe, but no star is too big to fall. No matter what, no celebrity is safe from ruining their career. One minute, a famous person is at the top of the world, everyone adores them, and their career seems unstoppable. However, no matter how beloved, beautiful, or talented they are, it can all come crashing down in the blink of an eye. Sometimes, a celebrity completely self-destructs in the public eye and takes their career down with them. Let's check out celebs who ruined their careers on live TV. Janet Jackson Do you remember the 38th Super Bowl? In case you have forgotten, Justin Timberlake ripped a panel off Janet Jackson's bodice during the 2004 Super Bowl, revealing her right breast to 114 million TV viewers. The incident, sometimes referred to as Nipplegate, led to an immediate crackdown and widespread debate over perceived indecency in broadcasting. The incident was on screen for less than a second, but the media controversy started almost immediately. But what was actually supposed to happen? The stories changed and grew as the days went on, with no one really wanting to take the blame. But the story that stuck was this one from Jackson's publicist. Justin was supposed to pull away the rubber bustier and reveal a red lace bra. The garment collapsed and her breast was accidentally revealed. MTV tried to get as far away from the incident as it possibly could. The tearing of Janet Jackson's costume was unrehearsed, unplanned, completely unintentional, and was inconsistent with assurances we had about the content of the performance. In the end, Jackson took all of the blame and Timberlake got none of it. Even though it was Timberlake's part of the song and lyrics, it was Jackson who received all of the public backlash and took the biggest public hit from the incident. And that's before mentioning he was the one who physically removed the clothing from Janet's body. Meanwhile, Jackson was forced to release a written statement and a video apology. The decision to have a costume reveal at the end of my halftime show performance was made after final rehearsals. MTV was completely unaware of it. It was not my intention that it would go as far as it did. I apologize to anyone offended, including the audience, MTV, CBS, and the NFL. She was not allowed to attend the Grammy Awards the following month, while Timberlake was not only allowed to attend, he was asked to perform. Fergie The NBA's All-Star Game typically is not all that memorable. What do you remember from the 2018 game? Well, Fergie dared to be different during her national anthem performance, and it was spectacular. Inspiring, even. Not because it was good. In fact, it was awful. She took a risk on a scale few would ever consider going for. An already established, extremely famous celebrity, Fergie could have just done the norm. But she sure had her legacy in mind and a desire to do something greater. The failed anthem has its place in NBA history. It waged an online war, sparked some genius to make a remix to her anthem, and for the Warriors to dance as a group to said remix, and made every fan listening to a performance at a sporting event expect something more. Something daring, for better or worse. Her performance was a little shaky and inappropriately sensual. Actually, many people in attendance could barely contain their laughter. Fergie became a viral national laughingstock. It served as the final nail in Fergie's coffin and she has not been heard from since. She embraced the backlash of her bold attempt that went horribly wrong and even unnecessarily apologized for it a day later. I have always been honored and proud to perform the national anthem and last night I wanted to try something special for the NBA. I'm a risk taker artistically, but clearly this rendition didn't strike the intended tone. I love this country and honestly tried my best. And she is not wrong. This was a risk, a too big one that went all the way wrong, but a memorable one. Jessica Simpson Jessica Simpson generated all the wrong kind of buzz with her appearance on The Ellen DeGeneres Show back in 2017. During the interview, in which Simpson infamously announced she had gotten an IUD after her back-to-back -back pregnancies and nothing is going to get in that uterus, the star was dazed and confused. She slurred her speech and had trouble finishing her thoughts. After Ellen asked about whether she was expanding her billion dollar business, Simpson said they are growing. Vitamins, but hopefully they don't kill somebody over. B12. Energy. Following the interview, people on Twitter commented saying it was painful to watch and that she had to be high or drunk. Later, Simpson revealed, I had started a spiral and I could not catch up with myself, and that was with alcohol. In her memoir, Open Book, Simpson apologized to DeGeneres and viewers for having drank before going on air. 
her struggles with alcoholism are featured throughout her book, with Simpson also sharing she was too drunk to dress her kids on Halloween back in 2017. Following that incident, Simpson said she knew something's gotta stop, which led to her asking for help. She has been sober for more than two years. Jimmy Fallon A clip of RuPaul's appearance on The Tonight Show went viral after people noticed a moment where Jimmy Fallon looked absolutely terrified that he'd said something seriously offensive. Basically, Jimmy began the interview segment by congratulating Ru on becoming the first drag queen on the cover of Vanity Fair. RuPaul was shocked, yelling, A drag queen? A drag queen? Fallon froze. It seemed like his life was flashing before his eyes, all the blood drained from his body, until RuPaul revealed he was just joking, saying, I am the queen of drag. The moment went viral over the weekend, with a Twitter user's video of the interview getting around 8 million views. Fallon finally addressed it, saying he really did think he was going to be cancelled. I really thought it was over. That was it. I go, that's it. I'm cancelled. I gotta start my own hashtag Jimmy Fallon is over party, he joked. He added, I was like, wait, what did I do wrong? But it was so funny. Mariah Carey Before the ball dropped in 2016 finally came to an end, revelers in Times Square and viewers watching at home were treated to an incredibly awkward five minutes of Mariah Carey. The pop diva had just finished singing Old Lang Sin, and then the track of her 1991 hit Emotions began. But before the music started playing, she announced, We can't hear! apparently waiting in vain for technical support as the music played on. While her background dancers carried on as normal, the star gave up on singing, walked around the stage, and threw out some commentary and explanation. We didn't have a sound check, but it's New Year's, baby. It's okay, guys. I want a holiday too. Can I not have one? I'm trying to be a good sport here. Carrie was the final headliner before the ball dropped. As the song continued, she held the microphone out to the crowd that she would let the audience sing. Finally, the track ended and her shameful feelings were also at the final stage. Mariah seemed to turn around the performance with another song, but midway through the 2005 track, she pulled the microphone away, revealing that she had apparently been lip-syncing. One of her backup dancers quickly showed up and walked towards the front of the stage. Amid the social media-driven furor after the New Year's performance, some observers expressed shock that Carrie had been lip-syncing. And that's what Carrie said. It's not practical for a singer to sing live and be able to hear themselves properly in the middle of Times Square. With all the noise, the freezing cold, the smoke machines, thousands of people celebrating, especially when their ear monitors were not working at all. Listen guys, they foiled me. Thus, it turned into an opportunity to humiliate me and all those who were excited to celebrate the new year with me. She went on explaining how hurt she felt and she decided to take a break from social media moments. That should have been a disaster for Carrie, right? Shiniad O'Connor Shiniad O'Connor's career was positively blowing up in the late 80s and early 90s. In that time, she released her double platinum album, I Do Not Want What I Haven't Got, and her single, Nothing Compares to You, peaked at number one in 17 countries. However, that all came crumbling down on October 3rd, 1992, when she appeared on SNL. While performing, she ripped a photo of Pope John Paul II to protest sexual abuse against children within the Catholic Church, and she soon became a public enemy. The audience was silent throughout the performance. Madonna, something of a music rival to O'Connor at the time, criticized her performance, saying that, I think there is a better way to present her ideas rather than ripping up an image that means a lot to other people. Do you agree with Madonna? Do you think these celebrities feel ashamed since these moments? Let us know in the comments down below. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on your post notifications so you never miss a video from us. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching.